Eve thoughtlessly walked forward along the endless corridor of darkness. What is this? Is this the light of the lighthouse that Jeremy spoke of? The girl changed directions and began to walk towards the light. Soon the outlines of metal structures flashed in the distance. I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh, are we gonna finish the game soon? What is that? Is that orbit? Are we in the space? This looks like space to me, man. It looks like space. It seems the amusement park is close by. Oh, wire. I finally reached my goal. Lakeside Amusement Park is in front of me. The entrance is blocked by bloody wires. Having cut my palms with an effort, I managed to bend one of the corners of the obstacle and crawl inside. Surely there will be blood poisoning. A sluggish thought flashed in my head. That's fine. We're here for our brother. We don't need to worry about ourselves. I walked through the park, staring at the rides, frozen in silent anticipation. There's dead silence in this place. It will never again be filled with happy children's voices, loud laughter, and the smell of cotton candy and popcorn cooking. This whole town is dead. Long dead. I got to the ice cream stand and collapsed on the bench, exhausted. One of the, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a sign posted to the wall. Attention, attention! Lakeside Amusement Park will be closed for renovations on March 1st. A large-scale expansion of the amusement park and a complete overhaul of exciting routes of existing routes are planned. The work will be completed by November this year. Please be patient. We look forward to welcoming you and your children to the newly renovated Lakeside Amusement Park. Your humble servant is Robbie the Rabbit. Poor Robbie, man. This guy suck. The park. It had been closed for reconstruction for three months already. But this means that Sophia and I could not receive an invitation here. He began to slap her pockets in confusion. The gold coupon disappeared without a trace. I feel like I kind of showed the boss guy. And yet, what the hell is going on here? And suddenly, I heard the demanding cry of the baby again. As it turned out, I squeezed the doll in my hands for some time in a row. The toy looked intact. The umbilical cord was gone. The plastic is cracked in the middle. I picked out the pieces and saw something inside the toy. It looked like it's a printout from some website. Abstract. This work is devoted to the study of correlation, dependent, dependence of a person's sex, and arachnophobia. An experiment was carried out with two test groups. One included men age 18 to 40 years, and the other women from the same age category. Experimental, stud experimental studies show the prevailing presence of pronounced arachnophobia in the male experimental group, 90% in relation to 40% in the female one. Also, the study of the response of arachnids to human sex hormones was carried out. It was concluded that the male sex hormones, namely androstenedol testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, caused increased interest in arachnids. We dare to conclude that arachnids are more likely to attack male homo sapiens. Below was a bar of text. The paper was rejected for publication in our journal. The reason is the refusal of all three cases of blind reviewing. The author of the study should send in more revision. The broken doll and pieces of paper fell from Eve's hand. My god, Adam is in danger. Spiders in this town? I need to find him now. I rushed forward. What if we're just Adam? Eve's spirit was filled with determination. It's recommended to save the game. I don't understand what's going on. I thought I thought we were at the end. I thought we were just like, oh. Turns out Adam's been dead this whole time. He was uh, eaten by the spiders. But I guess not. So we're gonna see what's going on now. Seeing the ferris wheel from afar, I immediately noticed the figure of my brother. Oh, so he's okay. There's also no one here. Never mind, there's someone here. My brother stood silently right in front of me. His face was hidden in the shadow. Adam. His voice trembled treacherously. Big brother, I found you. You have no idea what I went through. You... What are you doing in this town, Adam? 
I was waiting for you. He... You know that you are guilty. I don't. I, in turn, am guilty before you too, little sis. Unfortunately, now you have to make a choice. What choice? Take out the dagger of Malakir. Eve obediently pulled the blade out. Eve, if you really killed me, do it again and thrust the dagger into my flesh. If you are tired and do not want to fight anymore, turn the dagger towards you and make a hit. I will accept any of your outcomes, little sis. Tears sparkled in the guy's eyes. Our souls will be saved, I promise you. My heart began to beat faster from the tension. Kill Adam. Kill the Adam. Kill yourself. Hmm. I don't know, man. We've done... Can I save, like, right here? And then I can just go back and pick a different choice. So we're gonna kill Adam first. I closed my eyes and made a sharp stab with the dagger. I was covered in many small pieces of glass. I realized that in front of me was a giant two meter mirror which shattered from the blow of the dagger. Dozens of small mirrors gathered in the shape of some symbol. There was an arrow on the floor pointing somewhere ahead. Throwing the useless weapon to the floor, I walked in the direction indicated. A ladder. Very cool. Soon I saw a staircase leading down somewhere. That's a ladder. With a hesitation, I grabbed the rusty rungs. I found myself inside the sewer, knee deep in musty cold water. Some time later, I got out onto a dry surface. There was a hole in the center of the corridor, in the middle of which a corpse was suspended by wire. I carefully moved along the wall, passed by, and opened the door with a sign, Keep Out. Fetty X. Oh yeah, that's my rap name actually. Ahead was a dead end. The small room was littered with boxes and crates. Not knowing what to do next, I went to the nearest box and wiped the dust off it. Cedar Grove Sanitarium Archive. A faded inscription flashed across. I think I read about it. The documents that survived the fire were to be sent to the public archive. But why did things end up here? I dug inside the box, and not finding anything interesting, I wanted to close it. When suddenly, my heart twitched. I saw a familiar name. Pulled out some kind of diary with a burnt edge and began to read. Looks like psychiatrist notes. January 10th, the new patient, Eve Coleman, was admitted today in a state of extreme stress. The chief physician in Portland Hospital has decided to transport Miss Coleman to Cedar Grove Sanitarium as soon as possible. The patient ended up ended up under my patronage, although I must admit that such a case has arisen for the first time in many years of my practice. Miss Coleman completed her gender reassignment surgery a few weeks ago. Judging by the records provided, the patient successfully passed all tests, analysis, and con conversations with a psychiatrist before undergoing the surgeon's knife. Miss Coleman's past name is Adam. Any mention of this name enraged the patient, which is mentioned in the report. January 13th. Miss Coleman has another relapse. She shouted about the blissful cleansing by fire, one of the parental home, and attacked the orderly Stewie. The patient was placed in a punishment cell under constant observation. January 19th, Miss Coleman monotonously tried to harm her body by banging her head against the walls. Every night she screams, nothing happened, and they keep eating me from inside. February 3rd, Miss Coleman repeated the attack on the orderly. She managed to wound him with a fragment of glass which she found and hidden in an unknown place. In agreement with the head psychiatrist, with the head physician, we increased the dose of neuroleptics. February 10th, Miss Coleman denied any existence of a person named Adam. The patient claims to be the only child of his parents. February 19th, Miss Coleman unexpectedly confesses to the murder of her twin brother. The patient is certain that Adam was 
strangled by her umbilical cord during childbirth. Such an unpleasant incident is quite rare, although it is possible in obstetric um, practice. March 15th. Miss Coleman is in a state of extreme excitement. The patient asked the police to start looking for her missing brother, Adam, 19 years old. Aggressive behavior, doesn't make contact, unsuccessful suicide attempt. March 22nd. Miss Coleman is looking at the ceiling and talking to someone, constantly asking them to leave. Another failed suicide attempt. March 29th. Miss Coleman obediently sits, locked up, and unquestioningly fulfills all the requirements of the medical staff. A slight smile plays on the patient's lips. She's clearly plotting something, strengthening control. April 16th. Yep. Uh huh. Right. It's impossible to read further. Remaining pages died in the fire. A rectangular piece of thick paper slipped between the pages found itself on the floor. Eve lifted it up. I stared in amazement at my own photograph. Eve pulled a photograph of Adam from her pocket. Oh boy, oh boy. It's over. They're the same person. I found Adam. I found myself. Tears poured from the girl's eyes. I don't know if there's like a body positivity message going on there. Like a... Not body positivity, but like... I don't know. It's not my area to be speaking on, so... But if it is, this is not... I don't feel like this is the right art farm to... To be... Uh... You know, preaching it. That, I'm gonna cut that out. That doesn't sound good at all. I climbed out. The fog swirled through the deserted streets. Eve cast a worried look up into the sky. Spiders. They are no more. The girl smiled faintly. My soul is purified. Ooh, I did it. Ooh, this music's gonna totally get copy claimed. Copyright claimed. For sure. So, I'm gonna... I'm gonna skip. I can... No. I cannot skip. Anyway, we finished that one. Let us go back and uh, kill ourselves, I would say. Oh no, we can't go back. Oh man. Ending acceptance. Hey, we got the good ending, at least. Well, I mean, I guess that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you in the next series I do. Uh, goodbye, all.